Hello, this is Jeffrey T. Fertiller back with another service management leadership video. Today's topic is on configuration management database or CMDB. And I want to talk about the role of a CI class. We hear of CIs, configuration items. We hear of a lot of attributes and things of that nature for those attributes, uh, for those CIs. But we have to think, who's the accountable person for this CI class, this group of CIs. You have to define them for your, your ITSM tool, and here's why. If you don't define classes, you may have treating, you may be treating all of your configuration items the same. Don't you want a different form, a different list of attributes for your servers than your databases? Yes, you may even want it different from Windows servers in Linux servers. There may be different attributes that you want to capture. And each one of these differences should be a CI class. In a CI class in the form of it has an owner, it has metrics, it has trending, you are auditing against a class. So when you see CMDB metrics, think about the class. Here's, here's a few examples that are just peaking of interest today. Internet of Things. Those CIs should be its own class, right? How about desktops, laptops, AV equipment? Those are unique types of equipment that need their own attributes, metrics, all of that fun stuff. And when we talk CI classes, we have to talk about CI class ownership. That owner is accountable. And those of you that are ITSM, ITIL people, think of accountable, there's only one, and they are accountable for that data being correct. Because, let's say it's a server, Windows server team, that CI class owner is now accountable for that data that is used for incident management, change management, and the other processes that depend on that CI data being correct. It's not the CI and the, the CMDB team, right? They're just, the, they're an R, they're responsible in the RACI. It's not their data. Yes, they help govern that data, but it's not theirs. They don't know the difference between this server and that server. Only the server team does. And so when you think of your CMDB, think about who are the CI class owners. How do you gain adoption from them and their group by holding them accountable. And dividing a CMDB into CI classes with different attributes for each, especially on your backend forms, is the way to cleanly have your metrics. Because you don't want to use metrics the same for your database team and your, let's say, server team or your laptops. They will have different life cycles. They will have a lot of differences. So how can we adjust what we're doing and, and divide up our CIs into CI classes. Many of the current ITSM tools force this issue by uh, requiring that in a field on the back end form, which is great in the way you set up. I don't want to get into tools. So uh, we do, we get into tools in other videos. I just don't want to uh, have conversations that are tool specific. This is Jeffrey T. Fertiller. Thank you for joining us on our YouTube channel. Please like or share the video. Subscribe to the channel. Leave me feedback below. We'd love to hear from you. Hope you have a great, great day. Bye.